I don't want to waste your time, so there won't be an intro. In today's video, we are going to be talking about some interesting Pro League stats again. A while back, I'd already made a similar video, but that one was mainly focused on operator pick rates. In this one right here, I want to take a more general approach and talk about things like map pick percentages, bomb site pick percentages, defender and attacker win rates, and I'll also split those up by region, so maybe the stats can tell us something interesting about something that is specific to a particular region. The data I'm using contains every single Season 10 Pro League match that was played in EU, NA or LATAM. So it covers the 4 month span between June and October, but it does not include Pro League Finals or other tournaments like the Major or Dreamhacks. If I need to clarify something data related, you will see a footnote on the screen and an explanation in the video description. Alright, uh, with the formalities out of the way, I'd say we start with something basic. What is the most popular map? It is Clubhouse, followed by Cafe, followed by Concert, Coastline, Bank and Villa, all of which are within 2% of each other. Trailing a bit behind is Border. What's interesting here is that the two most played maps are also the two most recent ed additions to the map pool, so it seems like Ubisoft is doing quite a good job of reworking their maps. Kinda surprises me a bit that Border is that far down, because I quite like the map, but I suppose it suffers from the same fate that Oregon did, which is that playing on border is getting kinda stale. All in all though, it seems like the map pool is quite balanced at the moment, especially if you look at the four maps in the middle. However, calling the map pool balanced is not actually accurate. If we consider only EU stats for example, we get a different picture. On the left in blue we have the global numbers, so EU, NA and LATAM combined, and on the right in red we have EU only numbers. And especially the stat for CAFE is pretty insane if you ask me. And the other interesting thing here is that there seem to be like three distinct clusters. We got CAFE and Coastline at the top, Clubhouse and Consulate like around the middle, and then we have Bank, Villa and Border at the bottom, apparently no one likes playing these. If we look at NA specifically, things are back to normal again, with the only notable exception being a few less rounds on CAFE compared to the global average. And for LATAM, we can already kinda guess how it's going to look like, because if NA is close to the global average, LATAM numbers must be going in opposite direction to the EU numbers to get back to the global average. And we see this here with lower than average round count on CAFE and Coastline, but higher than average round count on bank, border and especially villa. This graph right here also shows that pretty well. As for why these differences exist, I don't really know. I haven't really watched a lot of EU and LATAM games this season and I also can't make sense of it on an intuitive level. Like maybe you'd think that maps that play out kinda similarly would have similar pick rates within a region, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. because. I'd say that CAFE is most similar to Clubhouse, in the sense that both are very hard to attack and it's mainly about utility management, and Coast is most similar to Border, in the sense that here winning your gunfights is the most important thing. So yeah, there doesn't seem to be this within region consistency. For the sake of completion, I also have a slide featuring all four next to each other but these kind of graphs quickly get crowded with that many bars on them, so let's go to the next topic. We just examined pick rates, now let's examine win rates. Current consensus is that overall the game is defender sided, but that doesn't seem to be entirely true. Clubhouse, Cafe and Villa are obviously defender sided, but for Bank, Border and Coast you can't really tell because with these sample sizes I'm not sure if the difference between 52 and 50 is statistically significant or not. And this time around we do actually have an attacker sided map in Consulate. But again, I'm not sure about statistical significance here. Let's just assume that these are the true numbers though. I don't think the numbers for Clubhouse, Cafe and Villa surprise anyone, because these maps are very similar to each other, mainly in three different ways, all of which make attacking a lot more difficult. First one is that these are the largest maps in the game, which makes clearing them and keeping map control afterwards very costly both time and utility wise. Second one is that on all three 
maps, it is difficult to get deep line of sights into the objective, mainly because hard breaching is very difficult or just not feasible. On Villa and Clubhouse, you just get banded or impact tricked, and on Cafe, you need to jump through a million different hoops to get Freezer open. And Freezer isn't even that impactful, I think. The third one, and probably the most important one, is that on all three of these maps, there are clearly defined power positions for defenders to play in, where it's basically impossible to get them out of. We have K9 and Rafters on Clubhouse. We have Astro and I guess 90 on Villa. And we have Bunker and Cocktail on Cafe. All of these spots can basically solo carry around for the defenders, which is why it makes sense that these three maps are the most defender-sided maps in the game. Next, let's look at win rates grouped by region. This is aggregated over all maps and all teams. In EU, defenders actually win exactly as many rounds as the attackers do. In NA, the game is slightly defender-sided, and in LATAM, the game is very defender-sided. And we can kind of see the same thing that happened with the pick rates again. EU and LATAM are very different from each other, and NA seems to be somewhere in the middle. But of course, just like before, we need to look at the stats for each map individually to really understand what's going on. Because obviously, it's not that every map in EU has 50% win rate. As you can see, the, map that are, the maps that are defender-sided, globally speaking, so Clubhouse, Cafe and Villa, are still defender-sided even in EU, it's just that they are considerably less defender-sided than in the other regions. And the same is true for the other end of the spectrum. The maps that are balanced globally are actually attacker-sided in EU. Looking at the NA numbers, there's nothing too crazy here. Two maps that are very defender-sided in Clubhouse and Cafe, then four maps that are basically even in Villa, Bank, Border and Coastline, and then we have Consulate, which is slightly attacker-sided. The only outlier here is probably Villa. In both EU and LATAM, it's a very defender-sided map, basically on the same level as Clubhouse and Cafe, but in NA, the win rates seem to be a lot more even. For LATAM, we've got a few interesting numbers again. The three most defender-sided maps in the game are insanely defender-sided in LATAM, but this is actually the first time where you would expect the defense to win four of their six rounds. Don't get me wrong, 58% is still defender-sided, but it only corresponds to about 3.5 expected defense wins per game. So in a way, a defense winning 4 rounds on Cafe is actually doing better than average, even though the map is defender-sided. The rest of the maps are slightly defender-favored or even, with no map being attacker-sided in LATAM. Again, for the sake of completion, here are the stats for all regions side by side. And this is another graph that illustrates the difference between EU and LATAM pretty well. If you compare the red and orange bar on every, on every graph, you can see that pretty easily. Overall, we can say that the game is still defender-sided, but to which extent varies by region. When I first looked at the data, I was actually a bit surprised by how even the game has become. Especially maps like Bank and Consulate, because I remember them being more defender-sided. So I decided to also take a look at the data from Season 9 to see how the game has evolved since then. And it's true, the game was more defender-sided in Season 9. The difference is not big, but it's there. At least for EU and NA. LATAM is the odd one out, where the game actually became more defender-sided over time. And this is also what we see when we look at the maps individually. Bank, Border, Consulate and Coastline became more attacker-sided, while Clubhouse actually became more defender-sided in every region. And then we have this abomination of a graph on Villa, so it seems like Villa isn't exactly figured out yet. As for why win rates develop like that, I again can't pinpoint a single reason, but since they move in the same direction for every region, it's safe to say that this was not due to chance. There really seems to be something, or multiple things, that changed between season 9 and 10 that led to this difference. First thing that would come to mind are probably the quarterly released operators, because that usually represents the single biggest change to the meta. 
But if we look at the orbs that were released in season 10, it doesn't seem like the new operators had anything to do with lower defender win rates. If anything, I'd say that the defender win rates should have increased because Morsey became such a mainstay in defender lineups. Another potential reason could be related to operator ban rates, right? You'd expect that attacker win rates go up if there are less Thermite, Hibana, Maverick, Thatcher or Capitao bans. But that's not really the case. First of all, ban rates for these orbs actually went up, so you'd expect a more defender-sided game. But as we can see on the next slide, banning these operators doesn't even seem to influence win rates that much. The only exception to this are Thatcher bans. And by looking at these in more detail, we can at least explain why LATAM is the only region that became more defender-sided in Season 10. Overall, Thatcher was banned in 23% of all rounds, so globally speaking. But when we split it by region, we see that the overwhelming majority of Thatcher bans happen in LATAM. And if we combine this with the fact that Thatcher is the operator that increases defender win rate the most, it makes sense why LATAM would be the most defender-sided region. And by looking at past data from Season 9, we can also see why LATAM is the only region that became more defender-sided. It's because during Season 10, Thatcher's ban rate went from 15% to 52%. So it is safe to say that the increase in Thatcher bans, which only happened in LATAM, is the reason behind their unusually high defender win rates. Sadly, I still don't really have a solid explanation for why the game became less defender-sided in the other regions, at least I couldn't find one in the data. Anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this little dive into the stats. I hope that I was able to illuminate some of the reasons behind why the stats are like they are. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.